We do it every day without thinking. Start the engine, <laughs> drive around, fill up with fuel, pay a lot of money, and then pollute the atmosphere some more. But it doesn't have to be that way. Many alternative sources of fuel are being developed. One of them is created out of thin air with an ex-Formula One engineer in the driving seat. It sounds like an ordinary car, but it's not. Here in the south of France, inventor Guy Negre says he's developed a car that runs on air. No fuel necessary to power the car to speeds of 110 kilometers an hour, he maintains. Just a whole lot of fresh air. Driving an engine that Negra says is zero polluting. A radical concept that he's been developing since 1997. He's taken out more than 30 patents to protect his invention. Ah, l'invention, c'est le moteur. The invention is the engine. The invention is in the industrial process. There are lots of innovative things about the car. For example, the framework and the chassis, also the concept of the car is innovative. This technology is based on a rotation system and is exploited by cars which use natural gas. It is used even by people who work with combustion fuel. Hydrogen on the pressure systems are based on this type of technology. So too, the ignition systems of racing cars. Both Guy Negra and his son Cyril have worked with Formula One engines. Now they've developed their own version. What they say is a clean green driving machine. This kind of engine has been developed step by step and we arrived at this system which globally is very simple because it's quite like a spring. You compress air in the tank and you expand this air on a piston. You push this piston, you drive the crankshaft and then you go into the wheel. It looks like a toy car, but yes. it's real. Yes, it's real. Uh, the technology is like a toy car because uh, the, the body is in fiberglass, the chassis in aluminium. Even if it seems to be a toy, it's really a car and it's a, a good technology for this kind of car. It's designed, says Negra, to be recharged at home or filled up with specially designed air pumps. So, respect to other electric cars or ecological cars, it's a good system to fill it very quickly. Because in town, you don't need to plug the car for more than uh, a few hours. You just have to plug it on an air station, and like a petrol station, you fill it in three minutes. Negra says he's getting a lot of interest from international investors. It can accelerate, and it's very smooth. These Japanese businessmen visiting the factory in France for a personal tour. They're considering buying a license to produce and sell the car in Japan. Already the Negras say they've sold more than 30 licenses to investors from Mexico to Italy to South Africa. All part of their plan to roll out small local factories producing the various versions of their eco car. This taxi, one of their first air vehicles to be developed. Can we go to Nice, please? Paris, maybe. Catching a ride in a zero pollution cab, quite an exciting prospect. So to the promise of a bus that runs on compressed air. This model built to scale, all part of a design and production process that the team says incorporates creative vision, innovative technology and a smart business plan. This little zero pollution vehicle called the Minicat will be one of the first versions to be produced commercially. The team here hopes it will be on the road by the end of 2004. But it's not just ecologically viable, it's also economically friendly. The price tag is just six and a half thousand dollars. A very affordable price, all because the Negras say they've kept the car simple, light and compact. Designed primarily for the city dweller. We've already seen a shift to some extent. The smart car that a lot of people wrote off as an expensive development project that would never gain customer acceptance, that's become tremendously popular over here. And uh, we're seeing more and more of those in, uh, in city centres where space is tight, where people want to park, and also they want a lot of fuel economy.
Protecting the family purse strings just as important as protecting the environment. It is unthinkable to create an ecological car that is not also economical because people are not usually prepared to spend money to be environmentally friendly. The environment is paying a high price for our reliance on petrol-powered automobiles. It's generally agreed by scientists that gas emissions contribute towards global warming and a host of other environmental evils. I think everybody knows that it is necessary to create environmentally friendly cars. But is his vision just too good to be true and is it safe? Some motoring experts are still skeptical about the concept. The thing is that uh, with the air-powered car is that they must have solved quite a few technical problems that have, uh, have nagged other developers. One of those is trying to compress enough air into a tank that is not dangerous and you can carry around and won't rupture in an accident that will give you good extended range, good mileage uh, and good economy. Questions that will only rarely be answered when the car can be vetted by independent engineers and goes through crash tests. The first models are due to be rolled out by the end of the year. That's when Guy Negra's dream of putting a non-polluting car on our roads will be put to the test. Until then, though, we need to be careful about who they let drive their prototype. Oof. Robin Kerno for Global Challenges in France. Oh, they should have let me drive. We've got to go right now, but email us at global.challenges at cnn.com. I'm feeling okay. See you next time. Hello? Have you forgotten something? Don't, don't leave me. Guys, you can come in now. Stop messing around. No, come back. Global Challenges was sponsored by EDF.